Some people say that I do not give many subjective opinions in my videos. So, in this video, I am going to act like the most subjective, self-righteous, gatekeeping teenager who has only listened to 100 albums but thinks she has got the best music taste in the world. So, <laughs> I am going to rank the bands from the English label 4AD from S tier to shit tier. Peanuts, tomatoes, booze, death threats, I am prepared. I can deal with it. 4AD was founded by Eve Watts Russell and Peter Kent in 1980. In the 80s, 4AD gained prominence for acts such as Bell House, Cocktail Twins, Deck and Dance, Pixies, and Eve's own musical project, This Mortal Coil. In the 1990s and 2000s, 4AD featured The Breeders, Camera Obscura, TV on the Radio, Grimes, and Bon Iver. 4AD's current roster includes acts such as The National, Big Thief, Aldous Harding, and Future Islands, etc. 4AD was the first indie label that I know and got into, so let's get started! AD is an abbreviation of the word forward. An initial idea of 4AD was that it would be like a testing ground for beggars banquets and the successful ads would graduate up to beggars banquets uh, after one year at 4AD. However, the only bands that followed this path was Bauhaus, uh, who released the debut album in the flat field before moving to beggars. Speaking of Bauhaus, I just can't stand this band. The kind of pretentious, whiny, macabre, vampire rock. They are really good at presenting as like a very cool and slick band. I just can't stand their songs. Sorry, I know they are really well respected and beloved. I, I, I just I just can't stand it. Yeah, I'm gonna put them into I'm gonna put Bad House into D tier. You can send me you can send me death threats if you want. <laughs> Stella Lee go see Stella I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead Come on, skinny love, just let us see in 1999, 4AD founder uh, Evil Watts Russell sold his share in 4AD, and Bon Iver are the representative uh, 4AD acts in the 21st century. Actually, I am a fan of Bon Iver the first two or three albums. I just wish Justin Verno would add his vocal less. <laughs> I'd be happy as hell if you stay for tea. I, I saw online a description uh, that remarked his vocal as hipster cringe worthy. <laughs> as much as I like some of their songs, I am gonna put Bon Iver into C tier. <laughs> Similar to Bon Iver, uh, I and Y are kind of like a two thousands indie folk. Um, their music is kind of like harmless, but also not very memorable. So yeah, I'm gonna put them into C tier as well. This is another 21st century uh, singer songwriter, and personally, I prefer him to Bon Iver and I and Y. Less pompous and less. Less hipster, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna put him into B tier. <laughs> that can dance are an Australian music duo from the 1931. They are actually one of the first 4AD bands that I know, along with Cocktail Twins, and maybe I am too stupid. I I, I just can I just never really understand their music. What what their music is about. <laughs> Yeah, um, so music historian described that can dance style as constructed soundscape of mesmerizing grandeur and solemn beauty, African polarisms, Gaelic folk, Gregorian chants, Middle Eastern music, mantra, and arts rock. Uh, I think I appreciate the kind of Asian mystical elements in like painting or literature more. Uh, music not as much, yeah. Uh, since that can dance starts with D, I I'm gonna put that into D tier. Yeah, sorry. 
sorry. Theory Muses were the first American band to sign to 4 ad around 1986. In the late 80s and early 90s, 4 ad signed a bunch of artsy American alternative bands such as Pixies, The Breeders, Unrest, His Name is Alive, Belly, and Theory Muses. Yeah. And these bands share some members, for example, a King Deal was in both Pixies and The Breeders, and Tanya Donnelly was, be, was in uh, was in Story Muses, The Breeders, and Belly. Personally, I really like Story Muses' debut album from 1986, uh, which has this kind of really murky and foxy atmosphere, such as the early REM period that I am really, really into. And later on, Story Muses also managed to roll some really addictive uh, guitar pop songs. By the way, uh, Story Muses are still active uh, in releasing music, and their latest album was released in 2020. Yeah. So, personally, I am going to put Story Muses into A tier. <laughs> There is one thing that has puzzled me about the Pixies is that why they did not manage to get as big as Nirvana back in the day. The amazing pop songwriting, quiet and loud dynamic, playful creepiness of Nirvana are all present in the Pixies and Pixies did it earlier as well. Also, Pixies do not have a Kurt Cobain's pessimism and nihilism that might put off some people. Or maybe it's exactly because of Kurt Cobain's endless teenage angst that has resonated with many people. And plus, Pixies are not as emotionally powerful as Nirvana to listen to. I know that Pixies are relatively big in the alternative circle, but what I'm trying to say is that I think they have the potential to be bigger than they are. And both the album The Little and Bossa Nova have like many really really catchy chains that are really suitable for arena celebration. Personally, I think it's because Pixie's more elusive underground approach to songwriting might be the reason why they have managed to escape the mainstream attention. I used to love Pixies so much, and I still very much do. And some of their classic songs still get me going every time I listen to them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was embarrassingly too excited jumping to Pixies on my own that I forgot to record that Pixies belong to S tier. No argument allowed. Is it fair to say that the breeders are like the right girl version of the Pixies? Personally, I'm really glad that Queen Deal has her own band, the breeders, and to kind of fully display her talents. Obviously, I mean, Frank Black is fantastic too. Kurt Cobain was big into the breeders, especially the album Ports. He claimed that the album uh, directly influenced Nirvana. And personally, I can really relate to the vibe of the album Ports a lot. And my kind of album, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I am debating whether to put the breeders into A tier or S tier. What do you think? And um, I think I'm gonna still put them into A tier, not S tier, uh, because S tier bands are the bands I personally have strong emotional attachment to. And I have listened to the Breeders less, and I feel like in terms of the number of albums, uh, I don't know. I haven't listened to too much the Breeders in general. That might just just be my my problem. Yeah. You 
I'm Raz, this indie rock band from Washington, D.C., mostly active from 1983 to 1994. They have punk energy, three melodies, and avant-garde weirdness, and just seem to well belong to those quirky indie subculture works, such as Daniel Krauss' graphic novels or Terry Zrigoff movies, if you know what I mean. To me, Unrest belongs to those 90s indie rock bands, which, you know, is Stella's single favorite. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> my kind of sound, my kind of bands. By the way, years ago, I was having a shaved head. Yeah, like me, I was like bored. And just as I was pondering the meaning of femininity, Unrest sang on my phone. Like, this is a cool song. <laughs> Overall, I would put unrest into B tier, despite that the band flirted with me when I was having a shaved head. Yeah. <laughs> Join sales in color Patreon to have access to vintage shaved head picture. Thank you very much. And two members of unrest also formed a band called Air Miami. Uh, I also quite like the band, and I'm gonna put Air My Army into B tier as well. Since Vincent feels like a more sophisticated, more alternative version of Lady Gaga, and personally I think she's super cool and has many interesting concepts and like crazy visuals. Um, but I but I think her music is just a bit to overpackage for my preference. Also, uh, I also don't really understand her music. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna put Saint Vincent into D tier. Okay, I am going to contradict myself immediately. I just said that Saint Vincent is a bit uh, too overpackaged for my preference, but I personally I really, really like Grimes, um, who is like a maximalist. <laughs> uh, she she likes to play with elements like AI, cyberpunk, Japanese anime and manga, K-pop, climate change, video games, hip hop, like whatever things that she's interested in. Grimes is a pop author who likes to explore the imaginative world of a futuristic cyborg. Overall, I'll put Gwines into S tier. I think she is super cool, super talented, and she is the sound of the future. <laughs> TV on the radio. Um, I do like a few of their songs, um, but I feel like their sound is a little bit too bombastic for my taste yeah so i'm gonna put them into c tier <laughs> to ohio in a swarm of bees. the national's album boxer is one of my favorite albums and i think the national are probably uh, my favorite indie rock band of the 21st century and i have listened to all the albums and i just kind of hope that they will sing less about the First words, middle class, straight white males, melancholy and depression, which can get a little bit repetitive, you know. <laughs> Life is so hard. <laughs> I think for artistic inspiration, I think the national can consider becoming a second world, a peasant class, Asian female, and then they would they would feel like playing death metal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just kidding, just kidding. I know everyone is struggling with something. So overall, I will put the national into A tier and I will upgrade the national into S tier if they manage to put out a fantastic death metal album. Yeah. It's all mixed up. So I had a bold statement to make. Um, personally, I think that Mark Kozilek is among the greatest songwriters of all time. Um, Red House painters turn melancholy into such profound and desolate poetry. Mark Kozilek has the ability to source 
everything happened in his life. The most boring trivias, the most embarrassing anecdotes, the most mundane passing scenery, the most ordinary people into his own songwriting material and his own piece of art. I like the idea of turning our mundane, everyday existence and extremely ordinary people into beautiful art. I'm a big fan of that. He is also a natural born artist with a very captivating voice that can immediately draw you in, though it comes at the cost of him being self indulgent. His feelings are bigger than the universe. That said, my appreciation for Marco's look artistic skills does not mean that his personal abusive behaviors towards women are anything forgivable. Red House painters are totally assed here in my world. A while ago, I was listening to the song Mistress. And I enjoyed it just as much as I did as I was listening to it for the very first time. And then I realized that Red House painters have already become part of my DNA over the years. Some of Reynolds called the early 80s for the bands such as Cotto Twins, That Can Dance, This Mortal Coil, as Goth Light. Uh, he described it as rapture and reverie rather than macabre and morbid. And these bands very much set the early 4AD aesthetic. However, if I were to choose only one band from 4AD from the last century, the answer has to be Cotto Twins. There is also a divine and godlike quality to Cocteau Twins that is very therapeutic and so healing as well. Cocteau Twins save my life. I will fight with anyone who put Cocteau Twins to anything below an uh, S tier. An important element of the 4AD aesthetic are the album covers designed by the graphic designer Vaughn Oliver who is influenced by the surrealist painter Salvador Dali. Continuity in a band's identity um, and overall expression of the label's identity. Von Oliver is the head of the design studio 23 Envelope and V23, which contributed to many iconic 4AD album covers. Question: How much does album cover play a role in how we rate an album? This model coil were British music collected led by the 4D founder, Ivo Watts Russo. And their songs often feature supporting artists from 4D such as Cotto Twins, Jack and Dance, Modern English, and the Wolfgang Press. The idea was to allow the artists to record the material outside of what was expected of them. It also uh, created the opportunity for innovative cover versions of the songs that are personal to the 4AD founder, Evil Watts Russo. For example, this Tim Buckley cover interpreted by Cocktail Twins. On the floating ship's ocean. And Chris Bell from Big Star interpreted by King Deal and Tanya Donnelly. Your sister says that I'm no good. I think this motor choir is a genius idea, not only offer the platform for 4D founder and the artist to be creative, but also further define the 4D aesthetic and style. Yeah. So I'm gonna put this motor choir into A tier. Actually, uh, I have more than English vinyl, <laughs> and when I got this vinyl, I wasn't very familiar with their discography. Actually, I'm still not really familiar with their discography. <laughs> Sorry, and I got this vinyl because it was really cheap. I remember, but I, but I, but I, I don't know how much is this. Yeah, this is like Swedish cream. And this is the 4AD label here. And when preparing this video, I listened to them more carefully. And I enjoy, I enjoy quite a few songs from them, um, but I just don't really find them very memorable compared to uh, some of the other post-punk and new wave bands. Yeah, so I'm gonna put them into B tier. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> X 
Maximal Deutschland uh, post-punk band from Germany who got signed to 4AD after opening for Koto Twins in the early 80s. I think they are pretty cool and I uh, like their sound. And they kind of sound a little, little bit like Susie and Adventures. And, and I'm gonna put them into B tier. The shoegate sound fits 4AD aesthetic perfectly. Also, a lot of shoegate bands are influenced by Koto Twins. Personally, I really, really like Pale Scenes. The song Half Light Remembered has one of the most beautiful melodies I have ever listened to. And I like Lush too, um, but to a less extent. I, I mean, I mean the bands, not the shampoo. And yeah, so I'm gonna put Pale Scenes into A tier and Lush into B tier. Is that Lush? AR King are very underrated bands. Unfortunately, nowadays uh, only dorky music <coughs> nerds know who AR King are, kind of. Yeah. Pitch 4 describe AR King as embracing dove, soul, and paisley pop. AR King pushed the boundary most of their contemporaries completely ignored. And I agree. AR King are super danceable too. And so I'm gonna put AR King into A tier. Post Evil Era of 4AD got some dream pop shoegaze leaning acts such as Deer Hunter, a Blown Redhead, Doctor, and The Big Pink. I would say my favorite among these bands are Deer Hunter. And the album Michael Castle from 2008 has a very lush, all encompassing, hazy atmosphere that is pleasantly escapist. And the other Deer Hunter albums are not bad as well, and so I'm gonna put them into A tier. Honestly, I have only listened to the album 23, and I think it's a good shoegaze album. Although Blown Red Hat have been kinda active since the 90s, they got signed to 4AD in the 21st century. Actually, quite a Quite some bands are like that, for example, Tinder Sticks and Stereo Lab. I think they both just released one album through 4AD uh, in the 21st century. And overall, I would put Blown Red Hat into B tier. I think that's partially because I just don't know them that well, I guess. Yeah. Filter. I love these mighty oaks, don't you? Do everything and feel nothing. Giant Cleaning are among the recent burgeoning UK post-punk bands and I think they are a bit like the modern version of The Four but a bit more Porsche, like The, the Four are a bit more working class yeah, and personally I am a sucker for English humour and so I'm gonna put Giant Cleaning into B tier so at the end, let's go through the results of this tier list quickly. S tier are Pixies, Grimes, Red House Painters, and Cotto Twins. A tier are old school alternative rock bands such as Throwing Muses and The Breeders, Modern Indie Rock Bands of the National, British Music Collective, This Motor Coil, and shoegaze bands such as Pale Saints, A.R. King, and Deer Hunter. B tier, we got singer songwriter Cass McCombs, 90s indie rock on Reds and Air Miami. It was good post punk of modern English and Exmal Deutschland. Shoegaze bands such as Lush and Blonde Redhead, and newer band Dry Cleaning. C tier are Bon Iver, Iron and Wine, TV on the Radio. D tier, here we go! Bauhaus, Deck and Dance, St. Vincent's. Okay, so that's about the rankings of the 4AD bands. And so far, I have got this many nuts and one tomato thrown at me already. <laughs> You know, it's just my opinion, right? Yeah. In general, I think 4AD is a relatively feminine record label. Or can you describe record label in this way? Like the bands, I think they tend to be more delicate than raw, and they tend to use studio as an instrument 
rather than rock as hard as they can. And please note that I put some of the X into D tier is merely because I haven't really resonated with the album so far. Or maybe they will release new albums that will change my mind, or maybe one day I will gain a different perspective uh, from their previous albums. I do not have any negative opinions regarding the X purser. Also, I know that there are quite some 4AD acts I didn't really comment on. Um, it's mostly because I don't feel like I have a lot of interesting things to say about them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's about the video. And if you like this video, please give a like button down below. And you're welcome to share your thoughts in the comment section down below about your personal S tier 4AD bands and your disagreements or agreements, things like that. And as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. It's about 5 p.m. right now, and I'm gonna cook dinner uh, with the nuts and the tomato that you guys threw at me. Thank you very much. Yeah, see you. Bye bye.